Well, thank you for being with us. Look, this is a story which originated on this program. We go back to August 1, 2017. Peter and I were discussing many things with Professor Peter Ridd, the Professor of Physics at James Cook University. We were discussing in particular a chapter that he had written in a book, an important book called Climate Change, The Facts, 2017. It was edited by the Institute of Public Affairs, Jennifer Marahassi, and I urge everyone to read it. Professor Ridd wrote a chapter, The Extraordinary Resilience of Great Barrier Reef Corals and Problems with Policy Science. And amongst other things, he talked about the quote-unquote supposed threats to the Great Barrier Reef. He called them supposed because he said the threats were, quote, more contrived than the claimed effects of climate change. And then he said this, which is so true in Australia today, in relation to any utterance about the global warming hoax, Professor Ridd said on this program, quote, the challenges to the conventional wisdom are typically ignored, largely drowned out and sidelined by the majority. He said, quote, there's now an industry that employs thousands of people whose job it is to, quote, unquote, save the barrier reef. He then wrote an ironical sentence, quote, as a scientist, to question the proposition that the reef is damaged is a potentially career-ending move, unquote. Career-ending indeed. He was, after that interview with Peter and with me, charged by the university with serious misconduct, according to the Vice-Chancellor of the James Cook University. His employment was terminated, effective immediately. This is a man who'd been at James Cook University for 40 years. He'd given his entire working life to James Cook University. His knowledge of the Great Barrier Reef is unparalleled in the world. But he wrote in his chapter and argued on this program, and I quote, not only are there normal science distorting factors, such as only being able to get funding when there's a problem to be solved, there's also the problem that many marine scientists are emotionally attached to their subject. He wrote, given these emotional pressures, together with the lack of formal quality assurance mechanisms and documented examples of misinterpretation of calcification rates, we can be sceptical of claims that the Great Barrier Reef is in peril. Well, that did him in. His comments led to the charge that he was, quote, deliberately denigrating the university and its employees. He was sacked. In the interview with us on August 1, 2017, Peter Ridd also said, Professor Ridd, I think most of the scientists who are pushing out this stuff genuinely believe that there are problems with the reef. I just don't think they're very objective about the science they do. I think they're emotionally attached to their subject. And, you know, you can't blame them. The reef is a beautiful thing. Well, he's charged with serious misconduct, sacked. None of the charges related to the content of what he said. The first charge is that he breached the university's code of conduct. The second is he failed to take reasonable steps to manage or avoid a conflict of interest between his personal interests and the interests of the university as his employer. And thirdly, he breached directions from the university not to talk about the case. One interesting aspect of this, because this matter was today before the Federal Circuit Court in Brisbane, where Professor Ridd has his unfair dismissal case before the courts. It's interesting to note the views of the left wing National Tertiary Education Union, no less, who have risen to the defence of Peter, uh, Professor Ridd. Michael McNally, Secretary of the Queensland Branch of the Union, called for the immediate reinstatement of Professor Ridd last year. In a letter to Queensland Union members, Mr McNally shreds the pathetic argument of the university justifying the sacking on the grounds that Peter Ridd breached a gag order preventing him disclosing details of disciplinary action against him. The letter points out that the union's enterprise agreement with James Cook and other universities, an agreement covering the employment conditions of Professor Ridd and other academics, quote, does not require confidentiality about a misconduct process. The letter said, a university, even a relatively young one such as James Cook, should have the courage of its convictions and commitment to its mission so as to allow its staff to engage in robust scientific, political and academic debates regardless of any perceived reputational damage that critical positions might generate. The letter said, defence of the core values of genuine academic freedom is not well served by the corporate top-down anti-collegial and managerialist structure and culture in today's universities. Well, this critical matter commenced in the courts today. This is the guts of freedom of speech. And, of course, it's all about climate change again. 
Dare to disagree with the global warming hoax and your very employment is at risk. Or in Peter Ridd's case, terminated. John Roscombe is the Executive Director of the Institute of Public Affairs who has been following this case thoroughly. And he joins us from Melbourne. John, good evening and thank you for your time. Hello, Alan. Hello, Peter. This is a staggering, a staggering case. Is it in the courts today? Let's our viewers hear what your perspective on all of this is. We had Gideon Rosner from the IPA in the Federal Circuit Court today in Brisbane and Peter uh, and Alan, your video, that interview that you referred to, Alan, was shown today in the court. And exactly as you outlined, this is a fundamental case about freedom of speech, about academic integrity. And as you said in that interview back in 2017, Alan, to Peter Reid, this is about questioning and challenging science and doing science properly. So as you said in your introduction, uh, in this three-day court case, Peter was establishing the fact that the James Cook University breached its enterprise bargaining agreement by dismissing him for challenging the science and tomorrow Peter will be in the witness stand. I mean, nothing... The university hasn't charged Peter Ridd, Professor Ridd, with any matter in relation to the content. They, they, they haven't in any way challenged the content of what Professor Ridd said. Well, that's exactly right, Alan. And what's disappointing is that on a number of occasions uh, when the university said um, Professor Peter Reid uh, was not behaving collegially, rather than challenging what he said, the contents of what he said, um, they made complaints. They instigated investigations uh, into his behaviour. Now, exactly as, as you said in that interview in 2017, let's debate the science, let's have an argument on the evidence, on the data. But what is so disappointing is the JCU are not doing that. They're simply saying, um, you are being disrespectful to the university, you're being not collegial, um, you are not upholding the standards of the university. Now, if you were to uphold the standards of a university, you have an argument and you have a debate. And Peter Ridd all along has said, Let's look at the evidence, and if my evidence is incorrect or I've misinterpreted it, let's have that out. That hasn't happened, and that's see, one of the Peter, really disappointing things. Yeah, see, Peter, you and I have talked about this here, haven't you? Here is really, at the guts of it, to put it in language that our viewers can understand, here's a bloke who's challenged the group think on climate change. Well, you just talked about President Erdogan, who locks yeah. up anyone, any dis yes. academic who doesn't agree with them. I mean, John, this is a case where, you know, you can't find, certainly in Australia, a better expert uh, on the Great Barrier Reef. He's world-renowned. He's been at the university for 40 years. He's not, a, you know, a blow-in that's been there for a couple of weeks and he's not across uh, the detail. There's no issue with the content. It's just that he has a view that if the other scientists at that university are not brave enough, perhaps, to share, they may well have it behind closed doors. But, you know, science, we'd still all say the world was flat if no-one was prepared down in history's time to challenge various scientific so-called facts. But this is everywhere, isn't it, this John? Is I mean, this is the argument is, we don't want to hear from you, we just want to shut you up. And, and they want to shut up someone who has given his academic life to James Cook University. Peter would love to be back there. He won awards from the university for teaching students. He loves Townsville and, as he said, he loves the Great Barrier Reef. And Peter will acknowledge there are challenges with the Great Barrier Reef, of course, but this idea that the Great Barrier Reef is dying because of climate change has to be challenged. The federal government is spending something like half a billion dollars to save the Great Barrier Reef. Now, the point Peter has been making all along is that if we're spending that money, let's know what it is for. The Great Barrier Reef is a wonderful asset to the world and we have to have the science to support it. So exactly as you said, Peter, Peter Ridd is not someone uh, who's doing this for publicity. He loves the university. His students, there were many students in the court today to support him. He believes in the science and in the future of the Barrier Reef. John, um, this is John Roscombe, the Executive Director of the Institute of Public Affairs. Josh Frydenberg, at the time of all this, was the Treasurer, the bloke in charge of the money. And he said of the case, the controversy around Peter Ridd raises important issues, academic freedom and the right to challenge what may be seen as accepted wisdoms. These are essential in any society. Now, John Roskin, can I say this to you? Surely then if Josh Frydenberg, the Treasurer, holds that view 
and he's providing $500 million of taxpayers' money out of the budget to the Great Barrier Reef, surely his answer is quite simple. Reinstate Peter Ridd and allow freedom of speech and proper debate or you won't get your $500 million. That is a very good solution, Alan. And uh, as you said in relation to freedom of speech, um, this is about the reputation of the university. And full credit, as you identified, uh, to the National Tertiary Education Union for standing up for Peter Ridd. And it's not just for Peter Ridd, it's for all academics. Correct. Uh, to engage in debate. And when academics engage in debate, then the community benefits. And at the same time, as you know, uh, we have Minister for Education, Dan Tian, who's instigated the uh, French review into freedom of speech on campus and academic integrity. Well, I see, gather uh, the results of that are coming out soon. That's also going to be something important. So it's instructive to note this, we, we say the left wing, the National <laughs> Tertiary Education Union, making, I think, the most powerful point that could be made. And he's, they're saying, without the maintenance of the core value of academic freedom, our universities would cease to be worthy of the name. John Roscombe, you have written and your staff have written extensively on this whole business in universities and the denial of freedom of speech. I mean, Bettina Arndt can't go to a university and make a speech without being shouted out and abused and almost thrown out, and she's just one of many. How many Australian universities, therefore, on the criteria set by the National Tertiary Education Union. How many of these universities are worthy of the name in the oh, extension? Alan, 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 sadly, very few. And we have to understand that freedom of speech cuts both ways. Freedom of speech extends to people who we strongly disagree with. So, for example, uh, Sydney University lecturer in English, uh, Mr Rema, uh, published in the Fairfax Papers a number of days ago a statement saying that the University of Sydney shouldn't host the Ramsey Centre for Western Civilisation um, because of what happened in Christchurch. Now, I absolutely disagree with that view fundamentally, but we have to be able to express those views and argue them out. So it's not just about climate change, no, it's about our no. culture, it's about economics, it's about how we live. And freedom of speech has to cut both ways. Peter Ridd has to be able to have his discussion about the Great Barrier Reef and others have to have other discussions about other contentious, sometimes yeah, uh, how, difficult things. How ironical that Professor Ridd should say, quote, as a scientist, to question the proposition that the reef is damaged is a potentially career-ending move. It ended his career. That's being now contested well, in the courts. Well, well, it did. And, and, and Peter Ridd makes the point um, that the Great Barrier Reef and the Antarctic uh, are two of the world's wonderful assets. Both are in very good health. So there's not just the question of federal government funding half a billion dollars to the Barrier Reef. Uh, as, as Peter Ridd has talked about, there are livelihoods at stake. There is all of northern Australia. Um, so much of that area depends on the Barrier Reef and we need to know its health. And Absolutely. Peter Ridd said Absolutely. the Barrier Reef is healthy. Um, he was, as you said, sacked for arguing against the conventional orthodoxy and that's so disappointing. John, there's a lot of support for Professor Reid. I know I get contacted on my show and I know that Gideon was up there, as you said, in the courtroom. Can people follow it via your IPA website? Is there more information yes. they can do to send a message mm. of support? Yes, Peter, they can go to the IPA website, www.ipa.org.au forward slash Peter Reid yep. and you'll get today's update uh, on the case and uh, you can sign up to see Gideon's interview with Peter talking That's about I these things. That's ipa.org.au forward slash Peter Reid. Before we go, there's one point I'd like to make. And, and Peter, this is the system of justice. It's very difficult for someone like Peter Reid, just an ordinary citizen, on an academic from wage. His job, that's an academic wage, sacked from his job, no income, trying to take on this massive bureaucracy funded by the taxpayer. So he's had to go cap in hand, hasn't he, John Roscombe, to try and raise money from supporters to, to enable him to pursue justice. It's unequal wherever you turn. That, that's right, Alan. It was thanks to an online appeal that Peter started that raised $260,000. That's how much it's costing for Peter to argue to get his job back. Uh, something like 2,000 people or more Maybe. raised that money in just over three or four days. Up against, as you say, 
uh, the bottomless pit that is funding for lawyers from James Cook University. Absolutely. Well, thank you, John, for talking to us, and you'll keep us posted via that website. The website is John Roscombe, the Executive Director of the Institute of Public Affairs. That website, to follow the fate and fortunes of Professor, uh, Professor Ridd, um, as a private thought, I would have thought the case would last about two hours. <laughs> I mean, it's an open and shut thing. It's just staggering, isn't it? This can happen, but it is happening. They don't want debate. They just want to shut down debate, and that's what's happening. It's ipa.org.au forward slash Peter Ridd, and our interview actually with Peter Ridd will be there, and it's featured at about the four minute 30 second mark on that website. You can check it all out. ipa.org.au forward slash Peter Ridd. Stay with us. A fascinating, interesting story coming up to which you all can relate, I'm sure. This 